Today we're going to show you the behind the scenes of what my team's been working on and the progress of furnishing those 50 units that we started about 3-4 weeks ago. What's up guys, my name is Hamza Far. It's been a while since I last posted because I've been really, really busy. I'm gonna show you a little bit about the business and how I've optimized my cleaning, my housekeeping, and decreased my costs by over 60%. I talked about it a few weeks ago and I actually implemented it, and now I'm actually seeing the huge cost savings. And on top of that, I'm gonna show you guys right now on my phone exactly what I did last month, and I finally broke my goal on Airbnb. Let me blow your mind for what I'm about to show you. I don't really show a lot of people, but because you guys are my YouTube audience, come take a look. As you guys know, my huge goal for the last few years has been to finally do a million dollars a month on Airbnb, and finally, I hit it. Actually, I've done 1.14 million just in the last 30 days. If you take a look, I'm at 357 listings, all right? That's so far my reviews, pretty good in terms of quality. Just in the last seven days, go to seven days, in the last seven days alone, I've done $350,000 likely I can I could guarantee that they would all be ready by next Friday but next Monday would be uh, yeah let's, a little bit let's tight. so let's shoot for next Friday then but then we can basically do the start date for all the leases by next Friday then that works okay awesome and hopefully that gives us the time that we need to get that approval so we can just move everything forward for you so we are on top of it we'll get it taken care of and um, either Rachel or I will give you a call back today to just give you the, the latest okay awesome sounds great thank you very much we'll talk soon Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye. So that's another building that I'm trying to get approved at for 25 of units. First batch of seven starts next week. It's a whole long approval process. So I want to see bank statements, tax returns, two years, um, whatever, financials, what else, business credit, right? Some buildings are going to ask for that kind of stuff. And some buildings literally do not care. And I'm telling you, majority of buildings, are not asking for all that, you know, nitty gritty, uh, detailed type of documents and stuff. Which is fine, I don't mind giving it, but it just takes longer, you know, for them to go through everything. They have a lot of stuff to give them. But when you're first starting out, you don't have to really worry about any of that stuff. Especially if you're in Class B areas, Class B neighborhoods, Class B buildings, landlords don't really care. They just want to basically see you can pay your rent. And if you can do that, you're golden. Once you get to my level of the game, where you're doing millions of dollars a year, and you have 300, 400 apartments, and you're doing new construction development deals, that's when all the stuff matters. So that's why they're asking for all that because it's a completely brand new development. Uh, they're remodeling the entire building. Uh, it's a lot of apartments at one time. So that's why they're going through the entire process of making sure all my credentials and financials all check out. So you're probably wondering why I went to Costco physically myself with a bunch of my guys to pick up stuff. The reason is because right now we're furnishing about 15 units, but they're not gonna be ready for another six, seven days. They're still building furniture, waiting on deliveries. But I tell my team, like, listen, how many units are actually very, very close to being ready? Let's just get them live and ready and have photos taken tomorrow. That way we can get them booked for the entire weekend and not burn an entire week of opportunity cost of making money. So the only things we were missing was seven rugs, seven TVs, and like about a bunch of pillows, as you guys can see in the back here. So I told my team, like, hey, let's just go to Costco today, pick everything up for those first seven batch of units, and get them furnished, staged, ready, cleaned up, and photos done tomorrow, and that way they can get them booked for the weekend. That's exactly what we did. So sometimes in a situation like this, I'll actually go to Costco with the guys, we'll pick everything up, get everything done as quick as possible, and that way we can get it listed live and ready and start making money. Because remember guys, your burn cost is huge. So you have to get these units furnished as soon as possible. what you see is a storage space that I rented out from the building that I'm using for all my housekeeping needs, linens, towels, etc. All of our supplies, we pretty much come here in the mornings, load everything into the cart, and then spread out throughout the building and do all of our housekeeping. Some days we have 50 cleans, 60 cleans. We have a lot of cleans some days. Last Sunday we had almost 65 cleans just on one Sunday alone, and we only had six hours to do it. So if you look behind me right now, we have a, a lot of things labeled. King flat sheets, king fitted sheets, king duvet covers. Then you go over here, they have queen flat sheets, queen fitted sheets. So everything's basically labeled so you know where everything has to go. Over here on this table right here, it's a little bit messy right now, but we're still, you know, it's a work in progress. When all the laundry gets dropped off from the laundromat, it's not organized, right? So we have somebody who comes in for two hours every single morning, opens up the three, 4,000 uh, pounds of laundry and organizes everything. Basically takes a look at what's inside each bag and starts throwing it on there where it has to go in the respective shelves. 
Same with the towels, fold up all the towels, throw it on there. That way everything is ready for the rest of the housekeepers to just come, load their cars and take it straight to the unit and start the housekeeping process. So right here is where we have a lot of supplies. This is just three racks. We have another five racks of supplies on the other side of this wall. So right here, as you guys can see, we're running pretty low. So we don't have a lot of supplies right now. So my housekeeping supervisor will let our VAs know that we're running low on all the supplies. We already have everything safe, filled out for our vendors. Supplies get shipped straight to the building. We then unload everything, store everything back up, and so on and so forth. Now, we're in this building where my team is currently furnishing a batch of 15 units. I already have 15 units in the building. We're furnishing 15. Then we have 10 more starting November 1st. So at the end, by the middle of November, I'm gonna have about 75 Airbnbs just in this one building alone. Now I'm gonna show you guys my methodology and how I'm designing them, how I'm furnishing them, and what I'm doing to maximize my revenue and make as much money possible. So as you can see, this is a one bedroom loft. The big problem with a lot of these loft size units is that the rent is pretty high because of square footage. So buildings can either basically charge you rent, market rent depending on obviously the size of the unit itself in terms of number of bedrooms and bathrooms, or they can charge you on just square footage. This building charges on square footage. So I'm paying almost $2,400 for a one bedroom loft in this building. But if I go down the street, a one bedroom apartment is about $1,700, even $1,600 sometimes. So the only way for anyone in this building to make money is to maximize the use of the space that you have available by adding as many beds as possible so you can sleep as many people as possible. So what you guys can see over here is a part of the room that I partitioned off by adding a couple of beds. This right here is a big giant king bed with a nightstand. This right here is a curtain dividing the entire space. So now I can take this one bedroom loft and make it technically into a two bedroom. If you go over here, there's two queen beds and this curtain divides it straight through. So this section right here is technically another bedroom and now this one bedroom loft is now a two bedroom loft. And then right next to it, I had the option of adding some type of decor console table, but I decided, you know what, there's no point. Let me throw in a whole nother bed. Now I can sleep way more people. And then on top of that, because you have a lot of space being optimized by beds, you don't need to grab that big of a sofa, you don't need to grab that big of a TV stand or a TV. So as you guys can see, it's not that big, but it's really nice, it's unique, it's nice and modern, it doesn't have to be the most expensive sofa, it does the job. And the most importantly, it's a sofa bed, because that sofa bed sleeps an additional two people. So just in this living room here, we have four beds sleeping a total of eight people, and we haven't even gone to the bedroom yet. Now, if you come over here to the kitchen, a dining table that sleeps six people, and then over here, there's a huge empty space. I had no idea what to put, so we put these big, nice pool tables. If you're a bachelor party, or if you're a bunch of guys, a group of 10 guys, eight guys who are coming to have fun in Dallas, who want to experience the city, coming with your family, this is the best place for you. At the most affordable cost, you're not paying the total price of what somebody would pay to rent an entire house. You have everything you need. Now, let's walk over to the bedroom. Now what you have here in the bedroom are bunk beds. Each bunk bed sleeps a total of two people per bed. So that's a total of two, four, six, eight. That's eight more people that can sleep in this bedroom with an addition of four beds. Add on the extra four beds that we have in the living room, plus the four beds in here, we have a total of eight beds in a one bedroom loft, sleeping a total of 16 people. That is the only way to make money in these specific units because the square footage is so huge, you have to maximize the amount of space you have in order to sleep the most amount of people. And that's the only way to make money, specifically in this building that I'm in with 75 units. So on these doors, we're installing smart locks. These doors, as all doors are, are very annoying. Every single door is gonna be different. So we have to custom install a specific hole just for these smart locks because these doors weren't even meant for it. And then we have to take off the original door handles and put our own door handles on that don't have a lock on it because we don't want anyone to lock the door without the smart lock. The smart lock has to be the only thing that's lockable. We don't want to be locked out of our own apartments, so we take any other door handles off that have locks on them. So he's installing that right now. I have somebody else in the other room building furniture. And then over here, these guys are almost on building furniture. And I think they're pretty much done. They're just making some beds, cleaning things up, putting rugs down, and that's pretty much it. And as you guys can see, in terms of the actual colors themselves, I painted a lot of the accent walls a dark midnight blue to match the beds. 
I adds a little bit more color, a little more accent, a little more pop to a lot of my units. Rather than just having white everywhere, especially these brick walls too, it makes it look a lot different, a lot nicer than a lot of my competitors. Now this loft unit is a lot smaller, so I can't add three or four beds in the living room like I've done with the others. So yeah, as you guys can see, I'll show you right now what we can do with this space to still increase the number of occupants, but at the same time, our space is very limited. The only thing you can really do with the space given is just add this sofa bed right here. And this sofa bed sleeps two people. There's no other space at all whatsoever to do anything in terms of adding more beds here, which is fine, it's not a big deal. I'll show you in the bedroom on what we've actually done. Then on top of that, just have a nice big coffee table, big area rug, some plants, some trees, some decor, some wall art, and you're done. The unit looks amazing with a nice big floor lamp. Now let's go to the bedroom over here. Now in this bedroom here, I didn't want to add two bunk beds. I still wanted to have one queen bed. So a lot of people want at least the opportunity or the ability to have at least just one regular bed to sleep on because it is a one bedroom unit. So even if two people book the apartment, they'll leave the other beds unused, which is perfectly fine. That's not a problem. So in this bedroom, we have one queen bed and then a bunk bed. So we can sleep two, four, six, plus the additional two from the sofa bed. This whole entire apartment now has four beds that sleeps eight people. And this is pretty much the lowest I can possibly do on any of these units. The minimum in this building, my apartments have to sleep eight people with four beds. Now here's the last unit that I'm gonna show you guys. And it's pretty much exact same as the others. The only difference is there's no pool table because it has a nice big spacious island. And I like units that have islands. It makes it look a lot more modern, more aesthetic. And a lot of people like it more in my opinion, at least. So we have no pool table here, but the entire concept is the exact same. We have curtains dividing pretty much the entire space in half. We have two beds in one section that's partitioned off. That now is a complete separate bedroom. We have the sofa bed right here. And then we have the bed right next door in the living room. So we have a total of four beds just in the living room that can sleep eight people. Then on, if you go to the bedroom, we have the same thing as before. We have two bunk beds that sleep an additional eight people with four beds each. So this apartment has eight beds sleeping in total of 16 people. For a loft size apartment, it's perfect size, it's very spacious, and you can easily accommodate 16 people, no problem. So at the end of November, I'm gonna have a total of 75 units in this entire building. I started with 10 about a few months ago, and now I'm working my way up, up to 75 units. So it's been a huge progress uh, coming along with the amount of people that are working every single day, the labor hours, the painters, the furniture builders, it's been a progress. So let's do some math now and see how much money just the 75 units in this building alone is gonna generate me. So on average, I mean on average, each of these units are gonna be making around $4,000. My rent's about $2,250 plus all the other fees, about $2,400. So revenue alone, let's say we're at $4,000. This month, for example, some units are gonna do about 6,000 because it's October, it's a really busy month. Over the winter and slower months, they're probably gonna do around 3,000. Uh, some might do 2,800, it might do a little bit less. So let's just average it out to 3,500 as a conservative, okay? So let's do 3,500 times 75 units. We're at $262,000 a month on the low end. I think I should be, doing, I should be able to do at least 4,000. So let's do 4,000 times 75 units, that's around $300,000 a month just in this building. Times 12 months, that's about $3.6 million. So just this building alone with my 75 units is gonna make me $3.6 million. My cost of clean, and as you guys know, my housekeeping is all in a house in the city of Dallas, is very low. I'm paying my housekeepers on average about $35 per unit. It's not per hour anymore, it's per unit. So these are big giant loft units with eight beds in them and I'm only paying $35 to clean the entire space. And that does not include laundry. Laundry is outsourced at 70 cents per pound. Laundry comes, picks it all up, and then drop it off. I'm doing about 3,000 to 4,000 pounds of laundry per week right now. So when I did the math, my average laundry bill plus my average cost of cleaning is around 44 to $45 per unit. Now, I'm paying for the cleaning supplies. So let's say you'd add an additional $5 just for cleaning supplies alone. So my average cost just to clean the actual unit, we can safely say is around $50. If I was a cleaning contracting company, they would probably charge me anywhere from $100 to $150 because there's eight beds in each unit, right? On top of that, it sleeps so many people, the square footage, the size, I'm only paying 50. No one in this entire building, no one around me for these size units is paying anywhere close to $50 to clean the entire unit. On that $3.6 million in revenue, just from this building alone, at the very, very minimum, I'm gonna be doing at least 30% in net profit margin take home. 
So I can clear easily a million dollars a year just from this building alone and have it running operationally, smoothly, and you know, over the next few months, I might figure out ways to increase my margin even more. I think I should be able to get it up to at least 40% because I'm still gonna try to retune and figure out ways to improve my efficiencies. It's already pretty efficient so far, but there's always ways, there's always gaps and cracks that you can fill find out where the holes are and to improve your margin. Thank you so much for watching guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Right now is the best time in the entire year to get started with Airbnb arbitrage. Multifamily is about to start bleeding in the next three to four weeks. The winter is upon us and that is the slowest time of the entire year for multifamily to be renting out apartments. I have buildings blowing up my phone every single day begging me to take 10, 20, 30 apartments from them and I'm choosing not to because I wanna wait till December. December is the time where I can ask for one month free, two months free, even three months free in rent concessions before I sign a single deal. So right now is the best time for anyone to get started, do market research, figure out the best areas, the best buildings, the best possible zip codes, and finally make a game plan in deciding where you wanna start your Airbnb business. Just one to two units alone can free you from your nine to five and give you that financial freedom you've always wanted, just like it did for me two years ago when I was working as a nine to five engineer, being a corporate slave, making only $4,000 a month. Now I'm doing over a million dollars a month in revenue, taking home three to 400,000, living the life of my dreams. This could be you if you follow my footsteps and do exactly as I've done over the last two years. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram where I post a daily life behind the scenes of a real eight figure Airbnb entrepreneur. My Instagram is Hamzafar, my TikTok is Hamzafar BNB, and my Twitter is Afar BNB. I hope to see you guys till our next video where I'm gonna be in a brand new city furnishing 25 apartments.